up everyone? All right, so today is day one of my small account challenge and yes, I'm in a bus. I traded in a bus this morning. This is my traveling trading station. I've got this little table here. I've got my one laptop, two monitors. I was set up even broadcasting and streaming from the bus. So I'm trading on the road and I'm gonna go as far as this 150 foot ethernet cable will take me. That's right, I'm hardwired. I tried trading in the bus yesterday and um, as it turns out, I don't know, this metal bus doesn't um, get very good Wi-Fi signal. And even though it was good enough to trade, it wasn't really strong enough to run my broadcast. So I decided not to trade yesterday uh, in the small account and today is day one. Now, uh, I hope you are subscribed to the channel and I hope you hit the thumbs up because what I'm gonna do for this small account recap, uh, for, for the entire small account challenge, I'm gonna do quick recaps, quick breakdown of the trades I take so you guys can go through day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just quickly watch those recaps as the account grows. And of course there'll be some dips, but as it, you know, as I make progress. Now I'm doing this challenge because you guys said, hey Ross, I wanna see you do another small account challenge, but this time I don't want you to use any leverage. So I said, all right, I'll give it a shot. So with $4,316 in the account, today is day one of trading with no leverage. But I want you guys to know that my results are not typical. They're not gonna be typical of a beginner trader because I've been doing this for a long time. You guys thought that you could learn something by watching me do a small account challenge. I'm happy to do it, but I want you to understand that trading is risky. Most traders lose money. So before you put real money on the line, you better make sure you know what you're doing and you can know that by practicing in a simulator. Practice in a simulator, real-time market data. You can practice side by side with me if you'd like. A lot of our students have access to the simulator that, that we provide them. So you're welcome to do that, but don't put real money into the market until you know what you're doing. All right, so with that said, I wanna cover uh, two other important things. Number two, the profit from this small account challenge. Whatever I make uh, between now and, and the last day of the challenge, that number, I'm gonna to donate to charity. And my goal is to hit $25,000. You wanna know why? Because when I hit $25,000 and I donate that 25,000 to char charity, it's gonna put me over $1 million in charitable donations. Today I'm at $975,000 and I would love to cross the million dollar mark kind of as part of the end of this small account challenge. So that is something to get excited about. That's coming soon. And number three, before we get into the recap, today all about the micro pullback. And so what I did is I actually put together a micro pullback strategy PDF that you can download. Click that link right down there and download it. You can download it, you can save it, and it's gonna walk you through a bunch of examples of micro pullbacks. What I like about them, when I take them, when I don't take them. I'm gonna show it to you on this trade I took today, which was a nice one, $636 of profit, even on a small position of just 200 shares. So a small position, got some nice profit, one trade. One trade a day is a small account way. That's what I'm gonna be doing during this challenge. Now I was tempted to go back for a second trade today, and I suppose if I had, I probably would have made a little bit more money, but uh, but that's okay. I think the most important thing is being disciplined with a small account and just taking one trade a day. So I will use uh, most likely the full amount, the 4,000, well, whatever the, the balance is in the account. I'll probably use about that whole amount for one trade. So I'll get in and then I'll get out. Now remember, if I take a trade with $4,000, it doesn't mean I'm really risking 4,000 because I'm not gonna hold the stock until it goes to zero. If it goes down 10%, I'll sell for a loss which means on a $4,000 trade, I'm really only risking perhaps 400, which is still 10% of my account, but just so you understand how I'm managing risk. So my uh, goal is to grow the account uh, pretty consistently, but to not take any big losses. I, I don't wanna lose more than 10% in one day. That, that's for sure, that's gonna be a hard stop. All right, so with that, let's get into day one recap of the small account challenge. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and make your way through the small account challenge from day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up until I hit 25,000. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for asking me to do it, uh, getting me kind of pumped up and motivated. I'm excited. I hope you enjoy it. Hit that thumbs up and enjoy the recap. All right, everyone, so let's get into that recap. We're gonna break down the trades from day one 
of the small account challenge, uh, no leverage. So again, just to reiterate, starting balance today, $4,316.06. Total profit before fees and commission, $636. Approximate fees, which are $2 per ticket, uh, one buy order and one sell order, that's gonna be $4. Plus I have an ECN fee on the $4, 400 shares I traded. ECN fees are calculated at 0 0.0039, so 400 times 0 0.0039 is going to be approximately a dollar and 56 cents. So plus four and then um, 636. So I'm going to be sitting at about 630 dollars, uh, which is a good day. Now you know the interesting thing today is, and I had said this yesterday as well. I was like, I don't really want to trade higher price stocks in the small account challenge. The higher price stocks are just, that they're not really my favorite for trading in a small account. I really don't wanna take 100, 200 share trades. Uh, and yet at 9.06, there was um, a news headline posted and let's see, uh, it said volume move in regards to being mentioned as a short squeeze play, CLNN. That was at um, 9.06. And I pulled up CLNN and uh, you can see here 5.7 million shares of volume or 5.87 million shares of volume today. Up, um, uh, the price is 13.94. What was the gap uh, coming into the morning? So the gap on this was uh, relative volume 157 percent, which is huge. Um, change from the close. Well, I guess right now it's five percent because it's still updating. Oh, sorry, the gap there is 30 percent. Um, so gapping up 30 percent. So anyways, I pulled up the stock and I was like, okay, I, I see it. And I had already looked at OSAT, which was our leading gapper today up 84%. Uh, I did end up trading OSAT in my main account today, but I'll do a recap for that separately. Uh, works, I traded works in my main account as well. Although this is a lower price stock uh, pre-market and, and kind of as we were getting towards the open, I didn't really think it looked that great. So I wasn't really... Uh, I wasn't really that into it. I, I just kind of felt like this is a one of those continuation ones. And, and at this point, it's already kind of pulling back here. So the trades ended up being okay um, as it squeezed up there. But in any case, I'd already looked at it, wasn't too sure. BLIN, $9 stock, had a big move, but then was back below VWAP. I wasn't sure about that one either. So pre-market, I hadn't uh, taken any trades yet. And when I saw that news headline on uh, CLNN, I looked at, uh, oops, I looked at it and let's just back this up because what I want to show you is the micro pullback. So what I'm going to do for the YouTube recap here today, uh, I'm going to um, give you guys the strategy download for the micro pullback. Warrior Pro students, you guys already have gone through the entire micro pullback chapter uh, in the classes, which um, just for, for reference, for those maybe watching on uh, YouTube or, or on um Facebook, whatever the case is, um, the small cap day trading course uh, right now is sitting at, let me just see how many slides, we're at 1,339 slides. Uh, and this is our 20 chapter class. This is the, the day trading, the uh, Warrior Pro day trading course, not the small cap course. Uh, sorry, not the starter course. So this is in addition to the starter. So anyways, uh, there's an entire uh, section, which is chapter eight on momentum trading. And in chapter eight, the micro pullback is its own chapter, which we have maybe an hour and a half plus a bunch of live trading examples of. But the, the strategy PDF is going to be uh, a concise breakdown of the micro pullback and, and when I like it and when I don't like it. So make sure you guys on YouTube, uh, click that download uh, just, be just below for that. So CLNN, um, popped up here. And when I first pulled it up at 9.06, uh, this was 9.06 right here. It was at like $15.20. And, and I was like, okay, um, I I guess I see that it has all-time highs uh, not too far away. So that makes it a blue sky setup. All-time highs around 1750. You have a pivot right here at 1648. And you've got another kind of pivot at 1471. So I was like, okay, it's above this level. Um, and it looks like there's another one right around here. Uh, you know, you could I could see how it has a history of putting in some big green candles here. Uh, it had a move yesterday from 10 up to 13. It was continuing pre-market. 
Uh, but initially I was like, I don't know. So I kind of mentioned it. I was like, yeah, it looks interesting, but I don't know, 27 million share float. Uh, let's see if more volume comes into it. So then I look away, uh, I look back and it's at 1650. And I was like, wow, that thing just popped up a full dollar a share. So now let's zoom in on this right here. So I want to get in on this candle. So here it goes from 1525 up to 1550. Nice, 25 cents. Goes up to 15, uh, let me just play this like this. Goes up to 1560, 1580, 1590, 16, 1630. Hits a high of about 1644 and pulls back to 1599. And this is where I started looking at a possible micro pullback. So I was watching it off of 16, 16 support. And it dips down, it pops back up to 1644. And I was like, oh boy, okay, this thing looks like it wants to go. It's It looks like it wants to break. And I thought if it breaks 1644, what's the first target? Well, based on the daily chart, and we go back here, 1644, if we can break that level, we're looking at that move up towards 1750. That's all time highs. If it breaks 1750, now we're in a blue sky setup. And it's a somewhat recent IPO. This isn't a stock that has trading activity back to like the 1970s or something like that. Uh, the stock is only traded a little bit back in here. And when you see this kind of price action, it I don't know exactly if this was like an up list. Um, I don't know the whole story, but obviously volume came in sort of in December of 2020. And then a big day right there in February, pull back another big day. So former runner status, uh, blue sky setup, and it's a micro pullback. And at the time, I kind of thought it was the most obvious setup, given that the uh, two other gappers above it, OSAT works and, and three BLIN, were not looking that great. So when something hits my scanner, meaning it's moving up quickly and or uh, I see that there's a, a headline posted about it. And, and, and this headline was a little bit funny. It was a, maybe it's a short squeeze candidate. What does that mean? But in any case, I pulled it up and, and it was moving. So now I let it pull back again. And my entry, I said, if this thing breaks over 644, 645, I'm a buyer because this is a break of a flat top. Uh, and micro pullback. The flat top is 16.44. So uh, it was right there, 16.44. So what I was looking for was for it to break that level. And all of a sudden it breaks and goes right to 17.50. Now that is a micro pullback. You can see how it's uh, it squeezes up, then sideways consolidation, then a pop through that level. And then it goes up to 18.80. It goes all the way up to $20. It hit a high of 1995. And I entered at 1646. So I bought as it was breaking that level, just like I said I was going to for the break through that uh, micro pullback top. And then I took profit at 1964. I took profit. Uh, I don't remember if it was as it started to pull back or as it was still going up now. But in any case, it was right in that area. Uh, then I was looking at this and thinking, okay, this right here could be the next micro pullback right there, 19 back up to 20. And had this been just a little bit stronger, I think we would have gotten a breakthrough $20. This to me, it looked right for that breakthrough 20, but it just couldn't do it. So it came back up here to 1965 and then it couldn't break through 20 and it ended up pulling back from there. And I think the reason probably is a combination of the fact that at that time, we also had BLIN, OSAT and works. Works ended up, um, as you can see here, this is BLIN. So uh, works ended up uh, popping up right at the open and OSAT ended up kind of retaking, I think the position of being the, uh, the stock to watch as it started to curl right here at around 9.15. It's, it kind of started to curl back up right underneath its pre-market high. And so I think the, sh the focus shifted back to this as a leading gapper with certainly a lower float. Typically, a float of under 10 million shares is one that we'd be more likely to watch. So a lower float stock. And so this one became the focus. Now, uh, just to show you another example, AHPI, uh, AHPI right here. This one um, also gave some nice micro pullbacks. This stock squeezed from four all the way to over $9, which is impressive. So a micro pullback can be both on a one minute chart and on a 10 second micro time frame. 
So let's look at some micro pullbacks on this. Okay, so as I look at this, I would say that this right in here looks like a fairly clean micro pullback right through here. You can see how you've got a bit of a micro pullback. It popped up and then right through here is micro pullback right underneath the high of day. That's not bad. It goes into a halt. It resumes, it drops. That's a dip trade. Then it goes back up to the high. This right here was a micro pullback right there at 738 for the break of 750. Goes into a halt at 770. This right in here was a micro pullback. You know, the times I'm going to be more cautious trading micro pullbacks is as they get more and more extended because that can be when we start to see some false breakouts. But you can see there was another one right here, another one right back here. And that was marking the high there of 19 of 930. So this one uh, did give some has given some great opportunities. In fact, this one right here coincided with the first five minute candle making a new high. That would have been an entry at 804 which was right about, uh, we marked that out 804, right about there. So then what you have is multi-time frame alignment. When you have multi-time frame alignment of both a one minute and a five minute, that's when I usually have the most confidence to be aggressive. However, on a stock that's moving quickly, like AHPI and some of these earlier moves, you don't have time to wait for a five minute setup. And there are times where we'll see stocks even like OSAT where they just rip up and they don't give you that five minute pullback. You never get a five minute setup. And so if you don't take one minute micro pullbacks or even 10 second micro pullbacks, you simply may not be able to take the trades, which is okay as a beginner trader because micro pullbacks are for sure uh, pretty aggressive and, and therefore fairly risky. But at a certain point, I think it makes sense to try to add that strategy in your tool belt because you know there's a micro pullback at 13 going into 1350, that's 50 cents. Now, this is a micro pullback on a halt resumption that ended up being a false breakout and a rejection. So micro pullbacks, like I said, as stocks are getting more extended, can be a little bit riskier. Uh, but there was there were a, a bunch of them today. So anyways, I'll break them down a little bit more in the micro uh, pullback strategy PDF that uh, I'm putting up there for you guys. And now let me just give you, because um, I know you guys are going to be asking for it, a little tour of, um, of the bus. All right, so let's see. So I've got my camera set up um, over here. So camera's attached to the window right there. And this is my traveling trading station. This is the same trading station essentially that I've used um, you know, whenever I travel. So whether it's in Europe or around the United States, wherever the case is, I have my laptop and I have two USB monitors. I actually have a spare one somewhere because I wasn't sure one of these was uh, I thought was glitching out. But um, these USB monitors are pretty awesome because they're like a quarter inch thick. They're super skinny, as you can see right there. So you can pack two of them side by side and then lean them right up against the laptop. And if you have TSA approved TSA pre-check, then you don't even have to take this out of your backpack when you go through the airport. You just pop this thing right in and, and you're good to go, which is pretty cool. So this is the traveling trading station. I kind of wanted to trade from the bus just to do something a little different. Um, you know, I guess at a certain point when you've been trading for long enough, you feel like you have to keep it interesting. So I was like, all right, I'm, uh, why not? This is this is fun. I love the bus. I love, you know, it's nice and bright, but not too sunny because it's kind of overcast today. But uh, so if it's really sunny, it might be hard to see the screen. It's not too hot. I've got a nice little breeze. Of course, I can open this up here a little bit more. So this just fell off. I'm going to have to put that back together. But this spring loaded, so there's a little nut that holds it on there. So let me close that. You know, it's a, it's a 1961 bus. What do you expect? Okay, so there's a couple things that are a little loose on it. Horn still works. That's good. And I can, you know, like I said, I can take this thing on the road. Will it start right now? Well, so that's a great question. Um, I, I don't know if it will. I'm going to pull it out of here. Let's see. There it goes. Yeah. So she's running and uh, can take this thing all over the country. But of course, uh, only as far as Ethernet will take me because I, I really, although trading on Wi Fi is okay for, you know, for my own trading. For my own trading, it's fine. 
But if I'm gonna run a broadcast and I'm gonna try to upload videos to YouTube, I can't, I, I mean, I could do that on Wi-Fi, but if I'm gonna try to run the broadcast, it's gonna start, uh, there's gonna be start starting to be a latency issue. So anyways, um, being hardwired makes it a little bit better. And, and honestly, there's not really a lot of um, good service right here in the driveway, uh, but hey, who's that? Hello, girl? Girl, I'm over here. Hey, girl. And she loves it. She says she gets to stay close to her dad and, and also be outside watching chipmunks at the same time. So we're both living the dream. All right, well, um, I guess that's, that's it for the recap. So I'm gonna probably put the bus back in the garage and then I'll be back tomorrow and uh, try again uh, another you know, another day two in the small account. And the goal will be one trade. One trade a day is the small account way. Get green, shut it down. Now, if I go red, my max loss is 10% of the account. So that would be $400 based on the, the current account uh, today. The only problem is that's how I was basing my max loss when I was trading with leverage. And my daily goal was also 10%, which was $400. I don't know if I can get 10% without using leverage. The thing is, I think some days I might be able to. So today, for instance, my one trade was 200 shares and I made 600 bucks. If I could have bought a stock at $4, I could have bought a full thousand shares. And then with a thousand shares, if I made 60 cents, I'd be up 600. So, you know, a stock kind of like, um, not OSAT, but sort of like AHPI, I mean, that that's the right type for trading in a small account because the price is a little lower and, you know, you're getting these 50, 60, 70 cent squeezes and you're getting several of them. Look at it right now. It's all it's coming back up to the high towards 928. So this one would have been great for small account. I, I just stuck with my rule of only taking one trade. And and, I, and that may be a rule to, to rethink at some point, just because um, some days when the market's really hot, you might have four or five really good opportunities. And then another day when the market's cold, you have zero. So is it really smart to sell yourself short on the day when the market's hot? I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I feel like discipline is also really important when you've got a small account. So for that reason, um, may, maybe, it, maybe it is smart just to take one trade, even if the market's hot and just maintain that discipline. And then you know, once the account gets a little bit bigger, uh, maybe you could take a few more trades. Uh, I don't know, but I, I think it's the right approach right now. One trade a day. And, you know, for traders that are trading um, and, and have to wait, you know, two days for settlement, you know, if I take a $4,000 trade, then I can't trade for two days. I got to wait for that trade to settle. So you have to be really strategic. It's got to be like one really good trade a day, um, you know, based on how you use your buying power, et cetera. So I don't know, but I think for right now it's, it's a good approach. And I was kind of starting to feel a little bit of that urge to go back in HPI. I was like, let's see if I can be up a thousand dollars today. And I was like, no, man, I follow your rules, follow your rules. So that's it. Green day, day one of the small account challenge, no leverage, 200 shares. So 200 shares times $16 a share is you know, about 3,600 bucks in the trade, 3,700 bucks. So, you know, bought $3,700 give or, give or take worth of stock and then sold it for about a $600 profit. So uh, that that was a really nice trade. Uh, I didn't expect it from that price, but I kind of thought even if I just got, you know, 50 cents to a dollar with 200 shares, it would be, you know, a hundred bucks, maybe 200. And that would be a good first day. Uh, and I didn't see anything else that I thought looked better. OSAT, Works, BLIN. I thought those ones were risky. So Anyways, that's my recap for today. It ran a little longer, but uh, for future recaps, I'm going to try to keep them really quick. So you guys uh, watching down the road can just kind of blast through the small account challenge. You know, day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The goal is to make um, uh, generate twenty five thousand dollars of uh, total profit and then donate uh, twenty five thousand dollars to charity. When I do that, it's going to put me over one million dollars in total uh, charitable contributions, donations. So. Uh, I want to cross that milestone at the end of this challenge and make it uh, something to remember. So uh, that's the goal. And I am $24,300 of the way there, uh, give or take. So I've got my work cut out for me, but I'll be uh, be working at it and I'll be back here 
first thing tomorrow, trading in the bus uh, for day two of the small account challenge. All right, I'll see you guys then. And that right there was an entire video with no ads. I don't monetize my YouTube channel with video ads, which means you guys get to enjoy the content. But do me a favor, please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and let YouTube know that this channel is the channel to watch if you want to learn about day trading.